what a blow it was to discover that the community wasn't always as welcoming as I'd expected it to be. As a young teenager, enthusiastically clutching fresh copies of Scott Cunningham and Silver Ravenwolf, I was shocked to be called a fluffy bunny and told that I wasn't a real witch because I was too young and too inexperienced. Undeterred, I kept learning and practicing. Then I went back out into the pagan world. But the criticism hadn't gone anywhere. Being older, I didn't get called as many names, but I was still told I wasn't a real witch. This time, because I wasn't in a coven. More years went by, I was lucky enough to actually find a coven that seemed to fit me, and I learned a lot from my teachers and coven mates. But out in the wider community, I still wasn't considered a real witch. This time, it was because I, I, wa I wasn't in the right, right coven. We didn't have a traditional li lineage that could be traced back to one of Wicca's original founders. Well, poo. And here I am now. More years later, still I'm a third degree priestess in what my coven mates jokingly call the Wiccan Mothership, G Gennadian Wicca. The first Wiccan tradition before Wicca was even the word for it, with lineage coming out of my ears. Our early leaders were some of the first public witches as they inspired countless others through their writing and teaching. And guess what? I still have people who tell me I'm not a real witch. Sometimes they say it's because my tradition was made up in the 20th, 20th century. It's not really witchcraft, just watered down New Age beliefs mixed with ceremonial magic and feel-good self-help. Other times it's because I strive to follow a moral code that discourages baneful magic. Real witches aren't afraid to curse and do so freely. Real witches are scary. They're, they're transgressive living on society's fringes. Real witches talk to the dead. Real witches are solitary. Real witches belong to the right covens. Real witches, you get, you get the idea. I just couldn't seem to get it right. I still can't. No matter what I do, there are other witches out there confidently expounding on all the reasons people like me aren't real witches. This kind of naysaying was hard for me to deal with as a youngster. But the truth is that I struggled with the insecurity of the realness of, the, of my witchcraft. Well into adulthood, what if those people were right? What if I was doing it wrong? What if I really didn't have the right to call myself a witch? What if I was missing something? The way people, almost always, on the internet said I was. I usually played things pretty cool, but the issue ate at me in one form or another for years. Imposter syndrome. In other communities and disciplines, this nagging fear that you don't belong, that you're not really a member of the group, and one day everyone, will, uh, everyone else will, will figure it out and shun you is called imposter syndrome. It's almost never actually based on reality and it affects most people. In, in one way or another, at some point in their lives, it's not actually an indication of any kind of truth, but that doesn't make it any easier to deal with. 
in witchcraft communities, whether Wiccan traditional Lucifer, secular, or any other variety, imposter syndrome can be especially hard to deal with because we can be so critical of each other. Witchcraft is an intense, consuming practice that, even if we don't think of it as a religion, tends to become central in our, to identity over time. Witchcraft is a, is a core part of who we are, and that, and that means that even if we don't mean to, we tend to form very particular ideas about what it entails and what sorts of people are best suited to practice it. It, hurt, it hurts to be confronted by, by other par, paradigms that seem to threaten our own. It can be frustrating. If we meet people, we don't seem to value, value things the way we do. It's especially jarring to be told directly that it's you who, who's got it wrong. Thank you for another reading. Blessed be.